Good morning. I completely forgot to record yesterday. I dressed up talking to you guys. I don't remember when that was. I ended up, um, oh gosh, what did I do? What did I do yesterday? I went to the class, came back. I did talk to you guys afterward. I forget what else I did. Oh, I cleaned up the house and I feel like I've been cleaning like every time that I vlog. <laughs> so I didn't vlog it. But yeah, I like deep cleaned the house. Um, did like four loads of laundry. Ordered a pizza, a thin crust pizza, but I did have pizza. Um, I was just craving it like super bad. I, I started watching Bridgerton the second season, but I ended up falling asleep on that. Cause I had showered and was in like comfy clothes and I was like, I was ready to lay it down. So I ended up falling asleep on it and woke up like at 10 or something super late. And then I was up for a few hours because I took a nap at the end of the day. <laughs> so I was up until like probably two and was just watching stuff and finishing the laundry. And then I came in here and went to bed. And I literally just woke up, which is kind of late because I have that exercise class at 10. Um, wait, the lighting, come back. There we go. Um, I have an exercise class at 10 and it's 9.33. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess I was tired. I don't know. Now that I'm exercising, my body naturally wants to sleep um, like an adult instead of the horrible sleep schedule that I'm usually on. So I really need to get up so I can get dressed. I probably need to leave at no later than 9.45. Got like 10 minutes to get some clothes on. Thankfully, I just throw a hat on on Saturdays. But good morning. Oh, okay, let me get up. <laughs> Alexa, what's the weather today? The current weather is 35 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly cloudy skies. Today, you can look for snowy, rainy weather. Snow! 38 degrees. This has become my default workout hat just because, I don't know, it matches my Adidas shoes. <laughs> and, oh, I need to put that on here. Ah, it's 9.47. As you heard Alexa say, it is in the 20s right now, or 30s, which is crazy because we have had pretty much 60s and 70s for weather, and maybe some high 50s as well lately. So to be back to cold weather is very much like Ohio, but I was just really hoping we didn't have to go through that this year. I'm just putting a little moisturizer on my face. I'm gonna sweat, so I don't wanna go crazy. But I just need something to wake my face up. I need to fill up my water so I don't pass out. I'll see you grab the oranges. Hilarious. Why are you rushing? I don't like rushing. So last week, I think I told you guys that it was a collab with a hip hop um, cardio instructor. Well, this class is back to the original one, the first one that I went to, which is full AP doing his high intensity warm ups and then his high intensity strength training. So, not to say that last week was easy because it was not. I was in pain all freaking week. But, it's just gonna be different and it's gonna be back to the level of class that made me wanna throw. <laughs> and I didn't bring my snacks. It's okay guys, it's okay. It's gonna be great. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I'm happy to report I do not feel nauseous. I did not feel sick at one point, not a one. During class this week, it was hard as heck. It was honestly very equivalent to how hard the first class I went to was. Um, and I killed it, y'all. I was really pushing myself hard. And I was doing it! I'm so happy. Oh my gosh. This is like my fourth, fourth maybe? Yeah, like workout class. Um, in the last couple weeks. Third with AP. I feel really good. Oh my gosh, it just makes me want to work out more. I was actually salty because I didn't turn the exercise workout um, app on on my Apple Watch, so it didn't count like half my exercise. Usually it will still count your exercise points, even if you're not like tapped into a exercise. But for some reason this time, I don't know if my band was too loose or whatever, it wasn't really picking up my heart rate. So it wasn't until 1040, which literally was halfway through the class, I only had 11 exercise points. And as soon as I turned on the exercise app, it was tracking everything. I was so salty. I'm like, for real? For real? So, you know, a little salty about that. But it was fine. All in all, it was fine. I still closed my exercise ring. I still have a little bit more calories to burn for the day. But I'm feeling really great. Like, I just want to go do something. I wish I had a bike. I really want to ride a bike. <laughs> Y'all are probably laughing at me like, she's high on dopamine. Yup. I am. This is such progress from last week. I mean, from, what was that, three weeks ago now. Such progress. Maybe even a month ago. Because that class, I sat in this car and cried to y'all. Now look at me. Just the cheesing. <laughs> Hi to the vlog. Oh, he's brushing his teeth. I was trying to tell you to say hi to the vlog. I didn't know you were brushing your teeth. <laughs> Hold, please. <laughs> Babe. Oh, shoot. I forgot about that. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> At 12 30. Good afternoon. Afternoon, right. <laughs> I didn't pick up the camera again last night, but I did, um, I think I did, well, I can't remember if I did, catch some footage of um, church last night, so I was there at 3 o'clock for our run through for the pre-show, I'm assuming I told you guys that I'm on the pre-show this weekend, sorry if it's blurry, I'm trying to drive, but um, yeah, our church has like, for the online service, they have like a pre-show 15 minutes before the second service. Um, just to engage with our online audience and, you know, give them more than just the live stream. Um, you know, we talk with them, interact, do a game, all kinds of fun stuff like that. So, 
we did our run through yesterday and I was ever so slightly nervous. But honestly, I was very comfortable. Like all in all, I was super comfortable and it was fine. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be really fun. Um, I kind of hinted at it on Instagram <laughs> that I was gonna be on the pre-show. So, at first I was like, let me not and just pop up with no one expecting so that just those who see it will know that I did it. But I really think it's gonna be a good time. It's also a little special surprise on the pre-show that I have for my mama. So, I think what I'm gonna do is instead of trying to vlog there, I am going to just put the clip of the pre-show in the vlog. What is What's up on church on fam? One church? We are so glad that you're joining oh my us gosh, this so morning. Um, yes. But my question for you, oh my goodness, Dr. Okay. Hicks. Okay. Um, out of all the ladies in your life, yeah. what have been the most like influential ones? Oh my do you goodness. Think? Okay, Lacey. This this is a, kind of obligatory, right? It's gonna right. sound a little redundant, but Got you. my mom. My mom is all the mamas incredible, out there. you all. She's an incredible woman. Love she that. was my biggest example from birth until now. Look at her. She's incredible. Oh. She taught me worship. She taught me being um, a believer in salvation. She is the reason that I am the woman that I am today. And Lacey, guess what? In her hmm. 50s, she yeah. went back to college and got two degrees. What? That is impressive. What? So, you know, when people give me I credit, I say, but it's actually my mama, though. I, it's my mama. You know, and I'm sure she loves that. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. She loves Shout it. out to like, you, mom, if you're watching. That's my baby. She's a doctor. <laughs> so, speaking of ladies. Okay. We actually have a super fun game today. Oh, yes. I've heard. Okay. Are, are you ready for we emoji? <laughs> Wait, I think it's woe emoji, right? Woe emoji. Woman woe emoji. Woe emoji. Woe emoji. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Listen, <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. So this is this is how it's going to roll. Okay. Um, so they're actually going to put up some emojis up yeah. on the screen. Yeah. And from those emojis, mm -hmm. you and I have to guess what they are. Okay. And Let's see. guess who the woman is. Let's see. Help us out in the chat. Yeah. Help us out. You might okay. have to help us out if we don't know it, y'all. Yeah. Okay, so first one. Oh, okay. Um, a it's, plane a, it's a pilot. And a pilot. Amelia Earhart? Oh. Am I right? Yes! 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 Right. yes that is I'm correct. Right. We just got the word. I'm That's not going to lie. I was worried I wouldn't know one. So. <laughs> well, yeah. You, you're ahead of me here. Okay, next one. Okay, TV. TV. Money. Oprah. Gotta Oprah. be. Oprah. Gotta be Oprah. Oprah. Are we right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Oprah. We are doing so much We're better. Doing so great. <laughs> really super fulfilled. Last night's service, um, I sat in on. I usually don't sit in on Saturday. I'll go to Saturday's service if I'm like serving in the kids ministry or um, if I'm serving on One Church Music. But I very rarely sit in on the Saturday service. I don't know if I ever have, to be honest. Um, and I loved the Saturday service. It was so lit. It was so lit. What are you do? I'm behind someone who is literally full face in their phone to the point where they are drifting into the other lane. And I'm like two seconds from honking. I hate honking at people, but it's like, get yourself together. You're not looking that hard at your phone. Uh, but church was so amazing last night. Like literally worship went crazy went crazy the second song build your church is like one of my favorites from um old church basement album from elevation and maverick city like that song it's just, it just fires you up okay if you know you know so all that to say <sighs> worship went crazy and the word was really good it was so needed um I actually spoke to some things as always i feel like spoke to some things that i'm going through currently um which is reflecting on my gifts being grateful for the gifts that god has given me and actually using them um and not being like ashamed of them or thinking they're not good enough or whatever like the lord has just been throwing me in the tank i feel like and he's like sink or swim and i'm like okay i'm like treading water so um i'm really excited i am yeah it's just a good season i was really overwhelmed last night it's funny if i would have picked up the camera last night i probably would have talked y'all's heads off because i just i was so full after service like yeah but i'll tell you more as things unfold because i have another special surprise for next weekend hi hello yep it's me from the future the me that is 
currently in June of 2022 editing these vlogs finally and so you're about to see the surprise that I just referenced in the previous clip but I figured I should give it a little bit of an explanation first um yeah so the surprise is that I got asked to join my pastor on stage for a series that he called Dialogue. It was a series that was in um, April, really, of 2022. Um, and so he asked me to join him on stage. Um, the series was um, him having a series of conversations with a variety of people on stage um, on specific topics. And so I was asked to join him on stage on the topic of uh, Jesus in the workplace or faith in the workplace. So I was terrified. I've never done anything like this. Um, I really just responded, yes, because it's my pastor and I believe that he listens to God. And so if he was moved to ask me to join him, then I figured there's a reason for that. So I did not want to tell him no. Um, but yeah, crazy experience, crazy opportunity. I really am mind blown that it actually happened. I was exhausted and took off the next day off work after I spoke that weekend. Um, but really such an incredible opportunity and I really feel like God used it. So yeah, here's a clip. We're gonna jump in. We're in a series called Dialogue and we're taking it from Ecclesiastes where it says, two are better than one for they get a good return for their labor. All right, churches usually have one person talking in a monologue, but we're going to do a dialogue. And today I have two awesome guests with me today. And we're going to be um, talking about what it means to bring my faith in Jesus into the workplace. How does that affect my career, right? Often we compartmentalize our lives and we think, okay, you know, on the weekend I go to church and I have like a holy experience and then I go to work and it may not feel all that holy. And so if I think of work as a holy place, then it will affect the way I treat it. So we're gonna have a dialogue today. I'm gonna introduce my guests. Uh, today we have Dr. Gabrielle Hicks. Give it up for Dr. Hicks in the house. Um, and Bruce Mosier. Um, so Dr. Hicks, uh, give us a little bit, first of all, kick us off about your background, uh, how you got to where you are, how you, yeah. how you came to faith in Jesus and all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so I'm from Akron, Ohio, born and raised. Yes, hey. Akron. My family and friends, most of them are still there. Um, but yeah, so Shout I- Shout out to Firestone High School. Yes, Firestone High School. The you know, Yes, the Falcons. Falcons. Um, but I graduated in 2012 and then went straight off to college. I did nine years of college following high school. <laughs> Don't ask me how. I, you know, it's a miracle, to be honest. Yep. But I uh, went straight to Indiana University uh, for four years. Yes? Okay, Indiana. And uh, <laughs> got a Hoosier down. And uh, got two degrees there and um, left there and went straight to Chicago and got my master's and then left there and I, for some reason did it again and got my PhD at Ohio State. Oh wait, <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> Finally got it right, third, oh. <laughs> third, third, time, my, third time's the charm. My dad agrees with you. He was yeah. very upset that I didn't apply to OSU for undergrad, so he got it over on the, on the PhD. Um, but yeah, so then from there I went straight into uh, working for OSU. They reeled me in again. Um, and yeah, I've been there since August working uh, for the College of Education. I'm a post doctoral scholar there, and I do research, consultation, uh, project management for projects all across Ohio, professional development, all that kind of stuff for the college bed. So what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly, man, exactly. <laughs> um, Bruce Mosier, I kind of poked fun in the beginning, but seriously, I, I didn't say this in any, uh, any of the other services. Bruce has been one of the most Im influential key people in my life the last mm -hmm. eight years or so. I went, went, reached over to him, whispered in one of the earlier services, if not for him and my wife and probably one other person, I probably would have quit a couple times. I was in some very low moments in my life. I don't know why I'm aiming my mug at you. Um, yeah. yeah. But no, seriously, um, uh, in some of the lowest points in my life, I, I turned to you for advice and uh, you showed up, uh, obviously with, with tactical advice, but way more than that, just support your wisdom, and so I am forever grateful to you. Thank you for being here. Thank I'm you. excited for our church to get to hear from you. Sure. And, and, um, and, and again, you think about that. Your ability to be healthy uh, sustains your energy, gives you better presence of mind. Uh, it w works, we're, we're so linked so much. But the fact to, to take an add to that habit, a spiritual habit, and to have someone to process the scripture with and to go deeper in it, 
uh, is a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I want to encourage some people. Maybe you are in a stage of trying to form, you know, those spiritual habits. Um, or maybe you're like me. My approach to that was trying to do God like I did college. So, you know, I had a super organized planner and, you know, a step here, step here. And I knew if I achieve these things, I get this reward. And I tried that with building my spiritual daily habits and it didn't work, um, mainly because I was trying to earn something from God. I felt myself trying to do college for God, right? Like just trying to create this sometimes even unattainable goal for my uh, daily habits. And so then if I couldn't meet it, I'm an Enneagram 3, you know, I'm an achiever. So if I couldn't meet that daily, sometimes unrealistic goal for myself in certain seasons, then I would shut down and my time with God would start to feel like a burden, right? Like I'm not meeting some expectation. And right now in this season, I think God is really showing me that it's not about trying to earn anything, right? He's already given me the grace. He's already given me peace and all access to all of these things. And so now I'm trying to learn to rest in who God is, right? And allow my spiritual habits to be an overflow of our relationship. And just um, as I build and grow deeper with God, rather than trying to, you know, earn an A plus every day. So good. What I, what I heard in there as you were talking also is, is how the gift God's given you, the mind and the will and the drive and all of that, that you have, in a sense, are, are amazing because it enables you and empowers you to, to do great things and to bear fruit and to do all of that. But at the same time, there is a foothold the enemy can get to get you locked into legalism. You know, you're tr trying to be God's PhD, trying yeah. to be God's summa cum laude, trying to get God to give you an A plus instead of learning to rest in his grace that your value in his eyes isn't in how many years of college you went or how high you uh, attained and achieved. And, and some people go their entire lives, Dr. Hicks, they go their whole lives and never see that. And for some reason they have no peace because they're always striving, they're always reaching, they're always going. And in a sense, it's a false positive that if you'll just quiet your heart and you'll allow the Lord to search you and show you things he wants to show you, he'll go, hold on a second, I wanna show you. Now, right now, don't be Dr. Hicks, just be my daughter. Yeah. Okay, it's me again from the future. <laughs> and I wanna introduce this next clip as well because the day after I did the dialogue series with my pastor, I also was asked to join him on his podcast. So I came to the church and we met in his office and there was a whole podcast set up there. And yeah, we did like an extended version of the sermon, which I was actually so glad about because I felt like, I don't know if it was nerves or what, but I felt like, you know, I did definitely communicated well during the dialogue series, um, not the actual sermon part, but I felt like there was so much more of my heart shared during the podcast because it was just so much more of a comfortable environment and I was really open and honest and transparent about some things that I've kind of already shared with you too but um, it was definitely cool to really view it from a spiritual lens and get my pastor's thoughts on some of the things that we're sharing. Um, honestly this is my favorite 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 experience in April and definitely my favorite part of being a part of the dialogue series so yeah, check it out. So now I got to recognize it and go, do I fit with this? Do I shift with it? Mm -hmm. Or do I transition into yeah, something else? that's good. Okay. We actually had one of my favorite staff members. We were, I mean, incredible, wonderful human being. Mm -hmm. And she was working here and, and she, that, she came to that point. She said, hey, the church has grown to a point. My role has shifted and I want to work in something smaller. Mm -hmm. And we gave her a giant hug and said, how can we help? Yeah. It was wisdom. Yeah. She knew it was time. It wasn't she had ill will right. toward anyone at the church. It was just she understood the shift. Yes. All right. The third thing then is lift. Okay. Which okay. is what I would say, God moving someone. Your mm. assignment here is done. That, that sometimes the grace has lifted or the passion has lifted. That's good. That, that God has said, you know, I, I brought you here for this purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and you can almost sense, and it's, it's maybe a little harder sometimes to define or quantify but you feel something in your in your spirit in your heart that you're like you know I really feel like God has lifted me you know lifted mm -hmm. his hand off of me in this situation yeah. like my time has come my assignment's done and so I, I think for someone trying to kind of figure out that elusive try, trying to get conclusive mm -hmm. on something that feels elusive mm -hmm. around should I move I would say start with those three things yeah have you drifted if you've drifted, maybe it's just a matter of you refocusing on purpose and getting back on track. Right. Has something shifted? If so, what? And do you want to shift with it or do you not want to shift with it? Mm -hmm. Or the third is, has God lifted 
Has he, has he lifted you and is planting you, replacing you somewhere else? The, the grace that you used to have for that, you don't have anymore. Right. And now he is relocating you, mm-hmm. giving you a new assignment. Mm-hmm. All right. Woo. React. What do you think? <laughs> Amazing. First of all. Wow. Um, I think I've related a little bit with each of those categories. And I do think that makes it really practical because I, I've heard all sorts of different reasons for why people leave or are considering leaving and it's hard to even find direction around that. And I think what you just shared right now is some pretty practical direction. Um, I would have to, I think I would have to sit in it to really figure out where I fit in that because the other reality is I, I've spent most of my life in school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm just now in my career. And the scary part of it is what you're describing is what I've experienced just in, I was in education for so long. I was in school for so long. I was a student for so long that in some respects, I made those career and passionate decisions at a very young, I mean, I was 16 when I found out about school psychology and said, this is what I'm going to do. And the world, like you said, has shifted Mm -hmm. a lot. Um, Our field has shifted. We are... um, we always say we'll always have job security because there's always been a shortage of school psychologists across the nation. We're always in need. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times our job, even though, you know, that mission and vision that I found to school psychology moved me to tears, our actual job, once I learned about it and then was out in these, you know, in the trenches (laughs) in schools, it looks very different than what our mission and vision sounds like, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and that was hard for me to accept once I learned, you know, all of the different things that we deal with, mm-hmm. just the, the way of the world, my um, internship was, it started June 2020. If you remember life in 2020, we were, what? Barely. Okay. <laughs> we were three months into the pandemic and I come in, mind you, my internship was in Loudoun County, Virginia. So I'm in a whole new state in a whole new place. I don't know anyone. I can't really go talk and meet with anyone because we're all confined to our houses. And then, you know, parents are saying, hey, my child is struggling, you know, at home. I I don't know what to do. And we're like, you know, we're trained, but we're not trained in how to deal with kids in a pandemic. And how do you teach someone through a pandemic at their house? Yeah, I missed that day in a PhD class. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Here's what you do in a pandemic. (laughs) And that was my first year of like full-time work. Baptism by fire. Oh, literally, (laughs) literally. And where I was, the, the, the level that they were at, it was kind of like a throw you in there, you know, we'll help you. Make it till you make it. Oh my God. Oh, when I say stress, okay? Yeah. And so just watching that job play out in a way that I'm like, when I found it at 16, you know, and had that moment, this is this is a very different experience. Yeah. And so I was sitting with that. Like, Lord, I was in college for nine years, and now I'm scared to admit that this is looking like something that I didn't, I don't, I don't think you spoke to me back when I, it's so it, what, the way you thought that through and the way you thought about that, although it might have felt weird because you're essentially locking onto a vision early yeah. and going, hey, I want to bring this to fruition. The way you're thinking about it, in my opinion, is absolutely correct because the world is changing so fast. Mm-hmm. You got to come back to the core and the root of why am I doing this and yeah. what problem am I called to solve? Yeah, I, I went back you know, kind of toward the tail end of COVID and just looked at my job description. I have a job description. I went, I look at it and I tweaked it Mm. because I'm like, you know, pre COVID, it was a different job. My purpose is the same. What I'm trying to accomplish in building the body of Christ and, and, and preaching the gospel and all of this before I might view myself as a preacher. Now it's a content creator, right? What we're doing right now, even right, right. is part of me changing my job description to go. It's not just my job to stand on a stage and preach on Sundays. It's actually to use every mechanism, Mm -hmm. every medium that I have to get the gospel, get a message. Right. And so I think, you know, I, I applaud you in the way that you're doing that and not, and not seeing a revisitation of the vision, mm-hmm. you coming back and revisiting that, mm-hmm. not seeing that as you being disloyal or unfaithful to the to the original vision. Yeah. You're coming back and checking in. Mm-hmm. It's and part you, of the story. It's part of the story. <laughs> a song about it. Anyways. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that is, 
I, I think that's the main thing I wanted to communicate this weekend. And I have to be honest, I was kicking myself afterward because some of the people that were coming up were just, you know, oh, my gosh. You know, people here four degrees by 27, and I feel like they just kind of, like, raise you up to some, like, mm-hmm. pedestal. And I, I, I couldn't. It's tough life. It's a tough life we have. <laughs> now, it's, wait. It's now, wait. T- okay. I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Okay. So what, the point you wanted the, to make. The, the point that I want to make to people, though, is that point that I, I kind of hinted at, which is that I didn't start out with that, right? I didn't end up with four degrees because that was the ultimate mission. And I didn't, I wasn't leader and president of these organizations because I said, you know, I'm joining these organizations. I'm going to be your president. I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you, you know, mm-hmm. it was never that. It was always me taking one step and then watching God lead me to the next one. And so, you know, I, I do acknowledge this is not me talking down on myself to say that I'm, you know, not intelligent mm-hmm. and all of that. But it, my college experience was not about how smart I was. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't necessarily your like 4.5 kid. You know, mm-hmm. I had I had great grades, mm-hmm. but it wasn't about me being the top of the class and, and that kind of a thing. It was really just, I know I have some, some gifts. I know I have a heart for people. Lord, use me here and then show me whatever the next right step is. And it just so happened that those next right steps ended up into this story. Mm. So I say that to encourage people because I know sometimes it can be awe inspiring, but also discouraging to see. I, I have, I know in conversation with people, sometimes they see me and they get discouraged because they think you knew at 16 what you wanted to do and you went and got four degrees and now you're doing this job and like, you know, I have it all figured out. So I spend time making sure people hear the other side of it, which is like, I really did graduate with a PhD and say, oh, God, Lord, what, what is this? Like, mm. I don't know if, you know, I got this specific and now I'm questioning if I even did the right thing, mm. you know, or if I'm even in the right field. Mm. Like, those were scary questions to deal with that last year. Like, I'm in debt and, you know, mm. <laughs> I did all this moving around and all this stuff. Um, but I think I am starting to rest now in – God led me from step to step, and he's not dropping me off now at 28 saying, well, you did all that great stuff. Like, good luck with the rest of your life. Like, no, he's still going to order those steps, even if that means I end up in another field Mm -hmm. or doing something that I never originally envisioned. Mm